Welcome to the Women of Yesen podcast. I'm your host, Sophia, and this is an invitation to join me and our amazing guests to find inspiration and insights into your own journey to Yesen. If you ever feel overwhelmed or confused along the way, I'm also here to support you so you can tackle your challenges with confidence and make progress towards this lofty goal. To find out more about my work, check the episode description and make sure to subscribe. Well, إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر Bismillah, wa salat, wa salam ala rasulillah. Welcome to a new episode of the Women of Ihsan podcast. Today I have from Malaysia, Hannah, who's a convert and mom of two children, five and seven years old. Hannah is from France, Tunisia, and Spanish origin. She is passionate about languages, education, and self-development, and she's the founder at Arabic Nest. Arabic Nest is a platform to empower and support Muslim mothers in teaching Arabic following their child's development by equipping them with the knowledge and resources to make this journey successful. Thank you so much for making the time, especially with the time difference that we have between Europe. Assalamu alaikum and welcome on the show. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's such an honor for me to be here. So jazakallah khairan for inviting me. Wa yeah, the, the honor and pleasure is all mine. Jazakallah khairan. So let's get into it. Please tell us about yourself, your background, how you are from all of these different countries, how you ended up in Malaysia. <laughs> yeah, it's it's going to be a long episode, I think. <laughs> no worries. I have time. No, hi, inshallah. Hi, inshallah. inshallah. So, so, yeah, so I was born in France, um, but I grew up in Tunisia because my father is Tunisian, but mm -hmm. my mom is Spanish mm -hmm. and they both are French also. <laughs> So that's why there's a lot of mixture. <laughs> mashallah, mashallah. So, so I've actually yeah, lived in between France, Tunisia, and Spain uh, most of my life. But I also traveled a lot. So it's not very strange for me to be here in Malaysia. It's actually my third time being in Malaysia now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so yeah, alhamdulillah, um, I've been able to to travel a lot and and discover different places, different cultures. So it has been very enriching, alhamdulillah. Um, and yeah, and so I move homes very often. <laughs> so this is something very particular about my life. I've mm -hmm. been moving ho homes like very every few years. Mm -hmm. um, so How long have you been in Malaysia now? Now it's been one year uh, and a half almost Okay. this time okay. around. <laughs> okay. So alhamdulillah. So um, yeah, I'm here because I'm studying um, in an uh, Islamic university here. I'm doing a master's in educational psychology. So yeah, I, I went back to university 10 years after finishing my first my master's. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, learning never ends. Indeed. So, so yeah, actually, um, so yeah, my first master was in translation. So I'm, um, I'm a trained translator. But uh, I realized I didn't enjoy translation. Mm -hmm. I did love languages, but not translation. And so I kind of like switched to teaching. And this is where I discovered my passion. I mm -hmm. love teaching, um, especially adults, actually, <laughs> not, not kids. But uh, I can really, relate to I, that. I enjoy, <laughs> I enjoy teaching uh, adults, alhamdulillah. I, I also, obviously, because I have children, I'm really into like child development and all these things, obviously. Um, but yeah, alhamdulillah. So I discovered my passion for teaching. And as you mentioned, I'm also a revert. So, so yeah, I was, even though my father is Tunisian, I wasn't born in Islam and I wasn't raised on Islam. So I discovered what it really meant to be Muslim because I've been around Muslim for a long time, right? Uh, my father's family, they're all Muslim. But I only discovered that like uh, later on in life. And when I read about Islam, when I saw what Islam was about, it like, subhanAllah, it just hit me. Like, this is the truth. And and there was like nothing else. I mean, this was the the only thing that matters. 
Um, so alhamdulillah, yeah, I reverted to Islam and um, now I'm working to, on myself, I've been working for a long time since I became a Muslim, alhamdulillah, because I think um, this is something that is so important that we have to empower ourselves so we can reach our full potential because we have a mission here. We're not just here like for nothing. We have a mission and purpose. And so it's our job to find out what is that mission and to do it, <laughs> to just do it, right? I can and also relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, subhanAllah. So that's been my my journey and a lot of ups and downs, obviously, because this is dunya. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's always uh, interesting. Uh, we learn a lot from everything we experience. So, so Alhamdulillah. Mm. So you've just said we have, we all have our ups and downs. Are there any, uh, you know, struggles or problem that you had to to overcome in particular that you that you could share with us and the lessons that you you draw from them? Yeah, Subhanallah. Actually, there have been so many. Uh, I'm gonna be totally honest. My life hasn't been like this very <laughs> wonderful, easy life. Uh, but um, some of them are more personal, so I might not touch on to them, but I'm, I'll just share a few, inshallah. Um, the first one was when I reverted, obviously, because my parents were not Muslims. So there was like this struggle, you know, of like being proud of being a Muslim in an environment that was against you. Can I ask, so how was, old were you then? Um, 20... Four, I think mm -hmm. I don't even remember exactly yeah I think it was around 24 mm -hmm. 23 or 24 so so yeah um so yeah I was um I was with my parents living at, with my parents at mm -hmm. the time um so yeah definitely it was this was a, a big struggle um and and this was also a way for me to affirm that identity because mm -hmm. I had you know to be like sure of what I was believing in I had to have yaqeen you know certitude mm -hmm. because I had to face criticism and to face uh, rejection and opposition so this was a way for me to strengthen um, that newfound belief alhamdulillah mm -hmm. um, and yeah and then uh, the other struggles I think like many people is when I got married first and then when I had children because in today's society I feel we're not ready. We're not prepared to be married, at least uh, because I grew up in a Western environment and Western mentality and things like this. So I was definitely not prepared to be married. Mm -hmm. And all I had was like this, like wonderful movies, ideas and ideals, like you get married, it's going to be paradise and it's going to be wonderful. But then yeah, it's not. It's yeah. not they get like married that. and uh, they live happily ever after. Like exactly. this is how the this is how the movies end. But actually, it's only the beginning of the story. Exactly. <laughs> and a lot of uh, yeah, a lot of um, fortunately, a lot of us we we fall into this big big trap. Yeah. So that was definitely a big big struggle, um, because also uh, before that I was a I was not a Muslim, so I was like. My, I was very free, like I could do whatever I wanted without asking no one. Even my parents, they didn't have like any boundaries with me. So it was just like suddenly being married to someone and living with that person and, you know, having to compromise and things like this was like, this is difficult. So um, that was definitely a struggle. And then the next one, when I had children, this is when things started to change a lot because when we have children, we have to face the things we don't want to face. They will push us, so we do it. It's like <laughs> you, you don't have a choice. Either, yep. either you, you like ignore it and then it gets worse or you have to face it for it to, to get better. So alhamdulillah, I chose to face it <laughs> and to kind of, you know, explore my own life, my own story to understand why I was behaving the way I was, why I was triggered and, and things like this. And alhamdulillah, I learned so much and, and yeah, and, and it allowed me to, to grow as a person and alhamdulillah to, to become better. 
um, of course, it's always a work in progress. So we always learn, we uh, always improve, we always make mistakes, and that's okay. This is how we learn. I always said, I, as a teacher, I like when my students make mistakes because this is how they will learn better. Yeah, definitely. If you don't, if you don't make any mistake, you're not learning anything. Yeah, and as a student of life, yeah. we should also see everything like that. Like uh, it's not going to, everything is not going to go our way all the time, and when it doesn't. Uh, the best thing to do is really um, think about it and think about, okay, why am I upset? What is the outcome I wanted? Why I didn't get it? And is what I get now, is it really so bad? Or is it actually part of a plan? Because Allah knows what's best for us. And that exactly is one point, I think, why a lot of us struggle, struggle in life is because we don't take the time to ask those questions. We're so busy in our lives. We're so like always we have something to do and we don't take the time to actually pause and reflect on why things are happening this way. What can I learn from this? Like, was there higher in this? Maybe I'm not uh, able to see it now, but there was something good that came out of it. And and this is a, a struggle I see also with a lot of people around me is that when you don't take this time to stop and ask yourself those questions and just like, you know, go with the flow, this is when it gets harder and harder, subhanAllah. And, you know, on, on this note, um, a dua I often make is like, Allah, please make it easy. And in my mind, when I make this dua, is always like, I want things to get easier, right? I want to have less problems. I want <laughs> things to, to go smoother. And I realized like my life, it's never getting any easier. I'm like, why? <laughs> this is not possible. And then when I reflected on this, I'm like, Allah is not making my life easier, but he's making me stronger. Mm -hmm. So then it gets easier for me. Yeah, subhanAllah, yeah. It was very interesting reflection. And again, because I took the time to to kind of uh, think about this and, and try to see the, the bigger yeah. picture. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, exactly. I feel like um, nowadays we are always filling our time and mind with something. I find really sad that some people, whether Muslim or non-Muslims, that they cannot uh, spend time alone with themselves. They just, they just can't. They have to, to grab their phone. They will have to listen to something or speak with someone or play a game, whatever. Uh, but just sitting still and reflecting, for them it never happens. And I think this is the cause of anxiety that uh, a lot of people suffer from. So, yeah, I think, um, and I keep repeating that a lot, um, <laughs> taking the time to pause, listen, listening to ourselves and actually speaking with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who knows us better than we know ourselves, uh, making dua. This is really the way forward for us. If if we want, quote unquote, easy life, but like you said, it's not going to get easy. It's just, uh, it's beautiful how you say it. As we get stronger, then what we had in the past has become easy and we are ready for greater challenges. Subhanallah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I think, um, like you were mentioning, definitely all these things are very important. I would add also sabr. Mm -hmm. This is something that I found very powerful to, you know, to to be patient because ultimately we know that we have to know as Muslim that everything that happens happens for a reason and that this is what is supposed to happen, whether we understand it, whether we like it, whether it makes sense or not. It is not up to us because we don't have the wisdom to understand it. And another thing that I found uh, personally has helped me a lot is gratitude. Because when we focus on the good that we have, the, the good that we have experienced, rather than all the problems that we have, it makes it much easier to, to go on, you know, and, and not like feel stuck in all those struggles that we're surely going to have. I mean, like you said, it's not going to end. So, um, and definitely... Because I'm very passionate about languages, obviously, and I'm, I have a focus on Arabic. That's why I'm a big advocate of the Arabic language. 
um, as a tool to connect ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. Because sadly, too many people nowadays um, are neglecting Arabic or are focusing on only one aspect that doesn't make this experience as rich and as rewarding as it should be. Mm. Um, it, what am I referring to? So basically, like, yeah, when you learn how to read Arabic and you can read the Quran, but you don't understand anything. So it's, it's not going to affect you the same way. And that's why I always encourage people to really build a connection with the Arabic language because this will allow you to, to feel the Quran in your heart rather than just like understanding it with your mind. You know, this is like different. It's not the same when you read a translation, okay, I'm going to understand the meaning and things like this, as to the words are speaking to my to me directly, right? It's going to my heart. I can feel it. Mm -hmm. It's not the same yeah. um, feeling, obviously. And so this is something that I believe um, we have to prioritize and make sure we are working toward it. I'm not telling people like go and be fluent in Arabic tomorrow. This is like nonsense, but at least to start and build this connection, especially when you have children. So the the earlier you start with your children, the stronger the connection would be. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that for you as an adult, it's not possible. It is also possible. And even my personal story, subhanAllah, when I think about it, um, I learned Arabic as a child because when I moved to Tunisia, my parents put me in a public school. So I learned Arabic from the beginning, but then it went really well. Like my experience was really bad because uh, there was a lot of uh, corporal punishment and things like this. So I had this kind of like uh, association of Arabic with something very negative. Mm. So for me, Arabic was like, no. So for like 10 years, I stopped speaking Arabic. I didn't do anything with Arabic. It mm. was like, literally, like, I don't want to hear about Arabic anymore. Like, and I wasn't, I wasn't a Muslim, so it didn't really matter to me. It was like, Arabic was just a language. Yeah, yeah. And it's only when I became a Muslim that I realized, okay, I need to brush <laughs> this Arabic and, and do something with it. And um, and so at the beginning, of course, because I hadn't spoken or like interacted with the language for so long, it was really hard. I was like those people who can read but don't understand. Mm -hmm. I was like this also. And alhamdulillah, through, through the work I do, through teaching my children, I improved my own Arabic so much. And I'm in a place, I don't understand everything, obviously. Like, again, Arabic is not my first language. French is. Um and even like I, but Alhamdulillah, now when I read Quran in Arabic, I can understand so much, and I can, um, I can feel things mm -hmm. that if I was like reading the translation, I don't think it would be as powerful. I don't know mm -hmm. if you experience the same or understanding. Like I, I don't understand either. My, I'm, I'm also on a, on a journey. Um of learning Arabic, it's a very long way, especially if uh, we want to dive into the Quran because it's um, then it's the journey of a lifetime. We never get to, to the bottom of it, subhanAllah. And this is what makes the, the Quran so miraculous. I mean, it's um, uh, it's the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's really important, especially as Ramadan will be very soon around the corner, that we remind ourselves to make space for Arabic and, and the Qur'an, it's our direct connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I do not think that we can claim um, having this love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we um, neglect his Qur'an, his words that were sent from the seventh heaven to us. Inshallah, may Allah make it easy for us and grant us tawfiq mm -hmm. and open these doors for us. But I think it's uh, everything starts with the intention. And uh, when we're sincere, Allah makes it happen. Um, because this is one of the things we can say for sure. Uh, it's a it's a khair for us. It's good for us. <laughs> Learning Arabic, having this strong connection with the Quran uh, on a daily basis. It's like the, the five daily prayers. You, you can't say this is like, you can't have any doubt that this is the best for you. So thank you for, for this reminder. What I wanted to, to ask you, and um, I know we are very focused on Arabic today because it's your passion. It could be something else, like it could be another area of life. 
uh, about a misconception that maybe you had or limiting beliefs that were holding you back? Are there some? I guess I guess they were because we all had some or we still have at some point uh, that you would like to share with us that might be benefiting me and others listening. I think one of the the greatest things that hold me back on many things was perfectionism. Mm -hmm. Like in my mind, um, I everything had to be perfect for me to do things. Like otherwise, no point. It has to be perfect. So I would waste a lot of time. I would doubt myself a lot and, and those things. And ultimately, it's just like, this is what I've learned, especially, you know, trying to run a business. This is another side of life, you know, and you get to learn a lot of things also. And so that taught me that in the end, you just have to get out there and then you can work on improving. When you're going to, when you're going to start something, it's not going to be perfect and it's never going to be perfect. But once you start it, when you have, once you have feedback, when you have interaction, this is how you make things better. So if you never start, it's never never going to be there and it's never going to be better so you just have to start and and like with whatever you have and then just build on that um so definitely this is something i've been trying to work on for some time alhamdulillah um and i think another thing was um who am i like i'm, I'm a nobody so i cannot bring any change i cannot like do anything like meaningful or major I'm just one person right this mm -hmm. kind of mentality that whatever I do it's not gonna impact it's not gonna change the world or anything mm -hmm. um and I actually uh changed my mindset around this and you know with the Quran actually subhanallah um because changing one life is like changing a whole of humanity for me i'm making the parallel with the ayah that says um uh, Man jamian. talking about like um when you say whoever saves one nafs or one person mm -hmm. it is as uh, they save all of uh, humankind and and so this is very important that we don't underestimate um how much impact we can have and this was even more powerful when uh, one sister, I was listening to a podcast and she made this reflection and I was like, wow, and I've never thought about it like this. Um, but she was saying, okay, when you are empowering a mother, okay, to be better with her kids and, and things like this. So she's going to be behaving better with her kids mm -hmm. and her kids, when they grow up, will be behaving better with their kids and their yeah. kids with yeah. their kids. And it goes on forever. Yeah, and yeah. subhanallah, imagine with just one person how many people you can impact. We yeah. don't realize this when we, we do this. It's just, like, like, it's just one person. We don't realize mm -hmm. the implication mm -hmm. that can be. And it, yeah. it's sometimes even more than that. Maybe that one person, she's going to be uh, nicer to her husband, who's going to be nicer to someone else and so on and so forth. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, snowball effect. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah. affecting everyone around us. So we shouldn't neglect the little things because mm. these are the ones that actually create change and create positive change. Yeah. So I think this is something really important for us to remember. And mm. I really always feel so humbled when people tell me like, I've done something that helped them or like, because I have a podcast also, they listen to the podcast and it motivates them and, and things like this. Because when I started the podcast, it was just like, I just wanted to have a platform to share like other stories and things mm -hmm. like this. I I didn't like especially intended to like be motivational or anything. I don't know, like not, not to this point, but I feel really uh, grateful to Allah that it has allowed me to create this platform and to help motivate and inspire others to to do the same. Alhamdulillah. So, Mashallah. Um, I think we it's forgot really to mention important. that in the beginning that you that you also a podcast host, a podcast yeah. host. But <laughs> um, we will we will put in the links, and uh, anyone who wants to listen in can can go there. Inshallah. Inshallah, definitely. Yeah. So, so so yeah, it's it's um it's really important to to remember that whatever we're doing. Um, there's no small thing. Yeah, Everything not minimizing. is important. Yeah. And we, we learn that from, from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that, um, and from the Quran as well um, that on the day of, of judgment we will see an atom weight 
of the good that we did or of the evil. So an atom weight, I mean, something we can't see. So we should take this very seriously. Like even uh, the Prophet ﷺ who told us that even a smile is sadaqa, uh, it's a charity and it's getting us reward, inshallah. So not minimizing and neglecting all of these little things that we can do. And also what comes to mind, I mean, it's all the things that we are listening to or reading about in modern personal developments, you know, all of these gurus and everything. I mean, they are not inventing anything. We all have everything in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. how you build up new habits. And again, we know from the Prophet wasallam that the most beloved deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are small, but consistent, regular. So doing these small things, obviously small good deeds on a regular basis is going to make us stronger and then build upon this uh, foundation. It is so important to to work on consistency. But actually for me, uh, on that point, it's more about self-discipline. This is something I'm focusing a lot on, um, especially lately, um, is to build self-discipline. For me, this has been the key to really unlock um, potential because this is what can help us stay on track. This is what will help us achieve great things um, and, and be the person we're supposed to be. Uh, so alhamdulillah, um, I pray that Allah strengthen our self-discipline and uh, keep us steadfast on this on his path. I mean, yeah, discipline is also um, a big thing. And uh, a lot of times we make, we also make things difficult for us. And one of the things that uh, we hear as well is um, we have to make our environment conducive for having discipline. <laughs> like when you know uh, X, Y, or Z is going to distract you, then you should um, get rid of that so that you are in an environment where you can focus and do what you're supposed to do right now. And I think Islam in general is also about discipline. Like how do you pray the every day, five times a day on time? Like non-Muslims, when they hear that, they're like, what, five times a day? <laughs> like, it's amazing. And, and fasting, subhanAllah, fasting. Um, it yeah, also this is our a lot of discipline. Biggest, biggest test for us every year we have to go through it and every year we do it and if you reflect about it we're not just like like you said prayer of course it's important we are refraining from a, like a physiological physiological needs like mm. eating mm. is is so essential for us it's for our survival and we are able to refrain from it this is huge when you think about it so if you're able to do that how can you not be able to do something else yeah, if you can refrain from the halal, you should all the more be able to refrain from what's not good for you. Subhanallah, subhanallah. As a teacher of Arabic, I'm curious to know how you would like your Islamic values to to reflect on your work, how you interact you, with your you, with your clients. Sorry. Well, for me, it is the basis. I mean, this is like uh, Islam is the essence of everything. So. In everything I do, it like it's like written Islam all over it. I mean, there's no like doubt about it. And um, I think, uh, Alhamdulillah, that's something that I wasn't realizing until recently, um, because now I'm I'm studying in an Islamic university, right? And I used to live in France, and I studied in France, and so cultural shock. Class, yeah, no, but when in class the teacher or even the students would use a hadith or Quran as a reference. Mm -hmm. I was shocked. <laughs> it was like, we are allowed to do that? Yeah, subhanAllah. Because in my mind, I was so conditioned into academics is like, it has to be like, you know, scientific and stuff like this. And being in an Islamic environment made me realize, wow, this is unlocking so many potential. I was doing this before, but now, it's on an academic level that you can also do that. And I didn't know that. And subhanAllah, I think uh, this is something we have to do, like to link everything back to Islam and to Allah. 
how does Allah fit in everything? And not trying to fit Allah in everything, but it's like he's like it is already there. So you yeah. just have for you to to see it. So subhanAllah, yeah, that has been um very interesting. <laughs> Definitely. Um so so yeah. But usually, yeah, my the people I interact with are already Muslim. So that's like less of a struggle. Maybe if I would be working with non-Muslim, it would be a different experience because it would be more like da'wah, right? So trying to um, to teach about Islam in a way that is not like uh, forcing it into them, but just for them to realize what is Islam really about. So, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. yeah. So I think what you you were just saying uh, before is how we can define ihsan and excellence. In other words, so exactly. for you personally, is there anything to it that you try to do, like you're consciously trying to do to strive and to become one of these women of ihsan? Uh, Alhamdulillah, I think one of the biggest things that has been a game changer for me is seeking knowledge. And I know that when we say seeking knowledge, a lot of people think, you know, this uh, Shiha who is like uh, reading only very heavy text in mm -hmm. Arabic and things like this. But for me, seeking knowledge is like on everything. Mm -hmm. It's not just like that's heavy. Like some people thrive in this and Alhamdulillah, that's amazing. We need a lot of sisters like this. But it is also accessible to everyone, mm -hmm. whichever level you have. So for me, um, seeking knowledge is actually just a way for you to remind yourself of who is Allah, mm -hmm. of what is your purpose here, and how can you fulfill that purpose in the best manner. This is what seeking knowledge is about for me. It's literally just um, getting the tools to navigate this dunya. Mm -hmm. So you can mm -hmm. reach Jannah in the Akhirah. Inshallah, Amin. Inshallah. Yeah, I think uh, seeking knowledge uh, and again, to be maybe more specific, seeking beneficial knowledge, I think it's paramount to, to our lives if we want to get anywhere. I mean, it's so obvious for people who want to achieve anything in life, in their careers or studies, PhDs and whatever, that you need to to increase in your in your knowledge. Well, the same goes for for getting to paradise. I mean, you 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 need to be doing some yeah some research and uh, and learn about what pleases Allah or not. Like, what is it to be a good Muslim or not so good? And uh, we have the notion of uh the individual obligations, and. It's individual because we all have to do it. Like we all have to have this minimum basis of knowledge and like how how you make wudu, how you pray, how you fast, if you're getting married, what are the conditions for your marriage to be valid and then you're getting divorced, okay, how you get divorced and Mala protect us. But, you know, all of these things, heritage, business, transactions, all of this comes into the fiqh the jurisprudence and uh, and sometimes it's also something that we neglect you think that okay i pray five times a day i fast ramadan i give my sadaqah i'm trying to have a good behavior and that's it well it goes a bit beyond than that actually i'm really happy that uh, you highlighted this point of seeking knowledge because i'm really strong on that as well <laughs> alhamdulillah and i think also something that um can make this journey easier but it's uh, not always easy to find is um, a good uh, company. Mm -hmm. I mean, having people around you who constantly remind you of Allah is definitely a game changer. Because definitely. when you're facing something and that um, the person next to you or the person you're talking to would directly refer back to Allah, give tell you to be patient or this is like amazing. If you have friends like this, hold on to them. <laughs> don't yeah. let them go. Coming back to my previous argument about environment, if you don't have these friends, then you have to look for them. And if it's not like where you are, you can't you can't really find them, then you have to proactively be looking for this kind of company. And alhamdulillah, we live in the uh, age of internet. 
uh, like you and I, we are speaking through uh, on Zoom uh, now with the internet. You who are who's listening, you're listening from us from I don't know where. You looking for this kind of information is already going in this direction. But um, like your input, the the content that you are consuming is going to have an impact on how you think. And how you think is going to have an impact on how you behave, your actions. So it's really important that, like for myself, for instance, I listen to a lot of uh, Islamic reminders, lectures, and, and things like that, obviously, Quran, on a daily basis. Because it is, it is again, my environment. It is how I program my uh, my mind And it's going to have an impact on the long run, definitely. If I don't have these friends around me, like physically, then um, I can reach out to them uh, through the internet, inshallah. So exactly. yeah, amazing, ama amazing uh, point you're making about uh, having the the right company, the company of the of righteous people, inshallah. And and even to go beyond this, actually, if you don't mind. Um, Like you were mentioning, like if you don't have people around you who are like this and you proactively try to search, I have another great tip. Mm -hmm. If you want people like this in your life, be that people. No, of course. <laughs> be that person. Yeah. The more you are the person who who remind others of Allah, the more you will attract people who would be like this for you also. No, so if you don't have them around you, it's you, it's time you are the example. Yeah, mashallah, mashallah. Yeah, and yet I'm and now I'm reminded of what uh, what I was thinking earlier when you were speaking. But again, change starts with ourselves. Uh, we first need to change ourselves because at the end of the day, what is the control that we have over over people? Like you have children, I have children. How much control do I have over them? Well, <laughs> not that much. <laughs> Like how, and, and when you see how difficult it is to change just one small little thing in yourself, like you see that you are very weak in, in this or that and, uh, and you struggle to change that, how can you expect from other people to change instantly when you've been working on yourself on this just one thing for months or maybe years? So first start with yourself and again it's just coming back to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran he will not change the state of the people until they change what's within the them themselves and I try to remind that like I mean it's the one of the main reasons I do what I do <laughs> I, I firmly believe in this that before we expect anything from anyone else the world to change well First, ask yourself, what have you done to change yourself? Where are you on this journey of self-development and betterment, of becoming the better version of yourself and getting on this journey of Ihsan? Exactly. I'm sure uh, a lot of us listening and myself would like to know um, to know more about your routines, the things that you do on a regular basis um, that help you achieve success? Um, so for me, it's very, I have to be very flexible because my life is very unstable. <laughs> so that's like a skill I had to, to develop. Mm -hmm. So I don't have like, um, a like perfect routine that I would do all the time, but I would have things that I would need to do every day Like you would say, maybe the most important task of the day or things like this, right? Um, that sometimes are do not happening at the same time every day because I have a very different schedule. I have to, like I have classes, I have my children, I have to take uh, my son to school and stay with him at school. So it's like a very hectic schedule mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. But things that are always consistent for me, alhamdulillah, is morning routine. Mm -hmm. um you know prayer quran askar mm -hmm. this is something that i try to hold on to as much as possible um because i know how beneficial and how important it is mm -hmm. um 
and then throughout the day I will have like like I said like uh, maybe I would be like uh, reading something maybe I'll be listening uh, to a lecture or a podcast or something you know like you were mentioning having some kind of positive input um, into you so you don't let's say deviate so you don't lose focus so you remind yourself of what you're doing here which is also why um, having self-discipline makes it much easier because when you have discipline it's there's no more choice to make like everything is clear you know what you have to do how you have to do it and when you have to do it so it's just like having everything planned out and being flexible whenever things you were planning didn't happen what can I do instead or how can I approach this um, so yeah um, like I think we all uh, might have different ways or different routines uh, in our life. But ultimately, um, I think it should be based, for me, for example, in, in terms of time, it's based on the prayers. This is like the pillars. So like, I wouldn't say to someone, okay, let's meet after lunch or let's meet uh, in the afternoon. I would always refer back to the prayer after yeah. the before yep. us and things like this because this is also a way for me to remind myself okay this is important and so this should be a priority yeah and um and so yeah for me this is something um that I advise a lot of people to do that to really organize their things around Allah instead of trying to fit Allah inside their days what about sharing with us your why and your vision or a passion project uh, that you have, like you're working uh, obviously with Arabic nests. What is the vision behind it? What is the impact that you want to have? So actually, initially, uh, Arabic nest came um, because uh, of the pure like language teaching aspect. Like when I started, I wanted to, to teach my kids Arabic, even though I was in languages. I was like, I don't know how to teach them a language. Like, yeah. I don't know how to approach this. These are two and different skills. Like, <laughs> yes, definitely. And I was like searching on the internet and everything I found was like the alphabet, teach the alphabet. And I was like, this doesn't make sense. I'm like, I don't know. There was something wrong. So I like, I researched a lot and I experimented a lot. Like my firstborn, like it was a lot of trials and errors. Mm -hmm. um, but Alhamdulillah, this allowed me to better understand like how children learn a language, how to make it, um, you know, uh, efficient and enjoyable also. So it's not like this very heavy because sometimes, you know, Arabic, when we teach Arabic, it's like not interesting or it's like boring and, and, and heavy and it's like very difficult. So kids are not interested and, and so on and so forth, especially in France. I don't know if you've experienced this, but um, I've sadly seen a lot of families whose children were forced to go into Sunday school and like they hated it and, and they didn't learn anything. And so it was very, very bad. So like when I started this project, this was my main focus, like helping uh, parents teach their kids Arabic. And I was so motivated. I like I had the method. I had everything. And I went out there and then I was shocked. Like I gave them all the tools, but they didn't do anything with it. I was mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. why? But this is like a clear like step by step. What's mm -hmm. wrong? Mm -hmm. And this is when I realized there's something else. Mm -hmm. They're not ready the parents are not ready to teach their children. Mm -hmm. That's the, like, and so it's a lot of limiting beliefs. It's a lot of misconception about uh, what it, what is Arabic and uh, how difficult it is and things like this. Um, so that's why now I'm shifting into integrating both. So at the same time, working with the parents to kind of crush those limiting beliefs, to give them tools to, to have consistency, to have a clear plan, to know how to approach, like what do they need to know so they can make the best decision for their family because there's no uh, like one strategy that can be applied to everyone. Like every family is different and so they should have a different strategy. So my work has been a lot around this while also providing the technical part, you know, like mm -hmm. what to teach, how to teach, what do you start with and, and mm -hmm. things like this. 
So uh, Alhamdulillah, that's what I've been working on, trying um, to put together these two together to, to create um, meaningful ways for parents to be able to teach their children and in the process, um, in the end, to connect to Allah. Yeah, this is like for me using like Arabic as an excuse of to, course. to do this work. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. I, I love how you evolved. Like first it was, okay, let's let's teach our kid Arabic. And then getting this awareness that the parent himself or herself is not ready. They don't have the right mindset and they need to be, they need the support of a professional, of an expert like yourself to get on this journey and make it happen, inshallah. So it's uh, amazing. I've uh, also recently discovered about um, about your work and um, I'm, I'm still, uh, I will be following you, inshallah. Because I think this is something we need to take very seriously and uh, will be part of our success, the real success in this life and the next, inshallah. It's not just a language. No, it's the language that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the master of the universe, the king of kings, he chose this language for a reason. And uh, we need to honor that, inshallah. Is there anyone who's your biggest inspiration, could be dead or alive, so, you know, I find this question um, very difficult for me personally, because mm -hmm. I don't have that one person mm -hmm. that is like my inspiration. There's so mm -hmm. many people mm -hmm. and sometimes it even like periods of time that I would like specifically listening to specific people and things like this. Mm -hmm. um, so like if I would like be telling you now, it would be like 20 people who have been listening in like the past month. So it's too much. Yeah. But this is the, the point where I want to get to is that for me, we can get inspiration from everyone if mm -hmm. we know how to look. Mm -hmm. So I always, when I consume content, I always try to go beyond what was shared. So it's not just I listen to it and then I move on to something else and whatever. So I would have periods where I would be listening to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And then I would have periods where it's like letting all this knowledge sit down mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and do something with it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, like uh, this makes me think of um, the way the Sahaba would memorize the Quran. Mm -hmm. They would like memorize 10 ayah and then apply them. SubhanAllah. And then they will uh, um, memorize 10 ayah. Mm -hmm. So I feel like uh, unconsciously, this is something that I've been doing. I would have periods where I would like, there would be this like desire in me to like learn and get knowledge and listen and things. And there would be periods where like, I, I cannot listen to anything anymore. I have mm -hmm. too much in me now. So mm -hmm. I need to process this. I need time to like reflect with it. I need time to put it into practice what yeah. does it mean for me how how do I feel about this how can I go beyond this and things like this so yeah of course and definitely we, we can learn from um, everyone in now in in the present but also in the past like the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa obviously <laughs> there's so much for us to learn like all the hadith and like there's so much to learn so it's Indeed. it never ends yeah. Um, then also the prophets, the, the stories in the Quran of all those prophets. The, every time you know you you discover a little a new detail, a new something, you're like, oh wow, this is amazing. And so that's why, like for me, learning never ends, and finding inspiration, being inspired, is a way for me to to learn. So yeah, that's my <laughs> answer. Mashallah, Mashallah, beautiful, and uh, yeah, um, I can totally relate to that as well. Subhanallah. Is there a message or piece of advice uh, you would like to leave um, the audience with? Um, the biggest thing is don't neglect yourself. I know everyone is talking about like self care. You have to take care of yourself and stuff like this. But for me, this translate into working on healing yourself on improving yourself on working on those difficult things that you don't want to face you have to do it you have to to face your demons like they say right mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um so you can get um other on the other side stronger and wiser mm -hmm. <laughs> alhamdulillah and and definitely like for the younger sisters do not wait to be married or to have kids 
to start exploring this. Just like right now, start questioning yourself, start exploring like your behavior, your, your what you're thinking, what you're telling yourself, um, everything, what you want in your expectation, what you want in life, um, what you want to build and all these things started now. What is your purpose in this dunya? Great advice, couldn't agree more. Is there anyone you would like to see on the podcast? And what would you ask her? So again, this is like a hard question for me because I cannot choose. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I, Because again, this is something I find um, listening to other people's stories so valuable. Yeah. I mean, there's That's why so I'm doing much, this. <laughs> yeah, there's so much wisdom. And sometimes even people who are like, seem like normal, ordinary people, but you might be surprised that they're doing so much extraordinary things, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I think we can learn from so many people. So whoever you invite on the podcast would be amazing. But um, mm -hmm. I do have specific questions okay. that I would like you to ask them. Okay. Uh, the first one is like what realization or like aha moment or whatever they say mm -hmm. um they have learned in their life and that has changed um their life for the better like mm -hmm. this one small thing maybe that changed their whole perspective and uh allowed them to like get into a di di different direction or something okay and the oh yeah do you, do you have the other question in mind yes you're not going to forget yeah. it no 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 don't worry okay So now I'm asking you that question. So um, definitely this would be um, when I realized that whatever I was telling myself would influence my behavior. When I realized this, it changed a lot of things. How did you realize because, it? Um, because I was taking a lot of courses and and watching a lot of things about this you know about trying to understand like how we we behave and you know all this you might be familiar with this the relationship like thoughts behavior emotion and all these things I really mm -hmm. want to understand mm -hmm. um, because I was really confused and so when I learned about this it allowed me to shift so many things in my life like very like uh, an example mm -hmm. when uh, someone would be angry at me or mm -hmm. especially for example my husband I would switch from, oh, I'm doing everything wrong, I'm so bad, to he is angry at me, I don't take it personally, he is going through something. That's why mm -hmm. he's, or that person is behaving like this. Mm -hmm. It's not because of me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and this allowed me uh, to have much more <laughs> calm and peace. Because I wasn't always focused on I'm the problem, I'm so bad, and and, and all these negative um, thoughts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this definitely changed my life because mm -hmm. I was able to enjoy it. <laughs> Subhanallah. So definitely. Yeah, but something. so important what you've just said. I'm happy you brought up the question. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, no, but second... it really, it's 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 really important what you've just said. Like. We grow up telling ourselves stories that are not true, but we believe in them and they are shaping the way we interact with the world and what we um, allow also ourselves to do or not. And um, it has a huge impact on our self-esteem, our self-confidence, and whether we are going to take this path or this path. Uh, so yeah, it's it's really important, and again, we need to to sit down and think about all of this. Go ahead with your other question. My other question would be, what you would you tell your younger self? I want you to ask that. Okay, what would you tell your younger self? So it depends which younger self. Okay. Let's say one general that would apply to all my younger selves mm -hmm. is um, be patient and um trust in the process in the sense that like this is life so just like enjoy enjoy it just like go through it and try to make the most of it like mm -hmm. no don't worry too much basically mm -hmm. maybe because also i was a very depressed and sad uh younger version of me mm -hmm. so i think that's why i would say this to me 
Mm -hmm. because I started being happy in the sense I understand it Mm -hmm. which actually means just be satisfied with your life Mm -hmm. uh, only later on so this is something I would tell my younger self to try to find ways to be satisfied with what you have amazing thank you so much Hannah for being here with us how can people find out about you and again I will share the the podcasts because we Uh, we forgot to mention that in the beginning. Inshallah. So yeah, the podcast is actually called um, Raising Righteous Muslim Through Arabic. So yeah, that's the name. And inshallah, you'll have the link. Uh, otherwise, you can find me on Instagram at Arabic underscore nest. Mm-hmm. Or you can uh, find out our latest news in, at ArabicNest.com. Great. Thank you so much again. I personally, uh, I resonated with a lot of what you said. Thing because maybe we have something, few things that are similar, similar in our lives, but unique. Subhanallah, that's what makes these conversations so. Well, I love them, all of them. I <laughs> really am I'm benefiting so much. So, inshallah, I hope that anyone listening in enjoyed. Please, if you did, show it to us. Send us a comment, a message, and subscribe to to the podcast. Go and visit Tag- Hannah. Tag us on Instagram. Yes, tag us on you're Instagram. New, I know you're new. You're yes, new, yes. new on kind Instagram. of new on Instagram. <laughs> yes, I'm new on Instagram. So please, yeah, tag me on Instagram. Yeah, let's get some interaction uh, going, inshallah. And uh, I hope um, this is beneficial for uh, a lot of people. But alhamdulillah, it was beneficial for me. So jazakallah khairan, Hana. May Allah make us sincere for his cause. Yeah, help us getting better, inshallah, for his sake. Thank you so much Ameen, again. <laughs> Thank you. Jazakallah khairan. And salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.